Do you really want to know why I'm not too thrilled to review today's movie? Well, it's not the worst thing to come from Larry Boy, but what was thought to be something epic turned out to be a bastardization of Larry Boy. <laughs> Before the bastardizations of Larry Boy. Yep, I'm talking about the League of Incredible Vegetables. Blew it. If you followed my channel since 2016, this review was over a year in the making. And part of me wants to vent my rage on this movie, but another part of me was like, why bother? But after so many pushbacks and so many rewrites, I'm finally able to review this sucker. And I even bought a t-shirt just for the occasion. Now as always, a little background. This movie took place when Marvel's The Avengers came out in 2012, but months later, as many kids shows at the time scrambled to release their own parodies to cash in on Marvel's cinematic blockbuster, VeggieTales jumped onto the bandwagon with their own parody, which turned out to be a mess of all sorts. Yep, that was the marketing model back then for a lot of kids shows, was to cash in on The Avengers. Now, if you haven't seen my teaser trailer for this review, please check that out because you'll see what I mean when I'm not too confident about reviewing this movie. The main character is not Larry Boy. And oh, did I mention that Larry Boy is barely in this? And you'll totally see why. So, uh, let's just get this over with. This is going to be hard. By the way, Christian Nutrition already reviewed this movie, so I might have some of the same ideas as him. However, there's going to be a lot more ranting here than there was in his review. If you haven't seen his review, go check that out. This is the long-awaited review of The League of Incredible Vegetables. The video opens with the usual VeggieTales countertop scene. The scene looks decent enough, but that's nothing compared to what this movie is about to throw at us. The actual story begins with the characters coming across the obvious plot device of the movie, which is the Fyrdar. Officer Scooter offers some crazy exposition about the Fyrdar. You know, I can't listen to the story because so far, we're in a boring museum with a boring setup. But don't worry, these three penguins in spy gear show up to steal that gun. Honestly, these penguins would definitely embarrass the penguins in Madagascar. Actually, they are just discount penguins in Madagascar. So as you can imagine, there's a robbery. Then Larry Boy shows up. Oh, but he needs to sound like Batman first? What? I guess this movie wanted to relive the first scene of Vermweed. Well, fail! So after seeing this clearly not rehearsed fight scene, we're finally introduced to the League of Incredible Vegetables. And we now see our favorite heroes like Escape, Vogue, and Thingamabob, who clearly thought twice about his superhero name since Larry Boy and the Bad Apple. They turn out to be useless because Junior throws a snowball to open a gate, letting the heroes catch up to the bad guys. So the penguins get arrested, the heroes return the Fyrdar. <laughs> Spoiler alert, that's not the real Fyrdar. Then, for some stupid reason, other than to pad this movie out to almost an hour, Junior is invited to the Larry Cave, where he is asked to join the League. What? Seriously? <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't believe this. Okay, two problems. Okay, one. Who sees a kid throw a snowball and calls it superhero worthy? And two, throwing the snowball was clearly Laura's idea. So why isn't she invited to the league? Anyway, the heroes want Junior to join their team. And Junior, like a doofus, says yes. Ugh, should have said no, Junior. Should have said no. Having escaped police custody, the penguins return to their evil leader, Dr. Blowhole. Heh, <laughs> you wish, right? Nope, we get to see this harmless dingbat, Dr. Flurry. 
a mad scientist gourd with a lab coat and crazy white hair. And he's Swedish, I think. Ugh. Okay, where do I start? Was bringing back the bad apple really hard to do? Or was giving us another monster not an option? In Larry Boy videos, VeggieTales has given us a space alien, an anthropomorphic weed, and a seductive apple with spider legs. So with all the creative possibilities, what did VeggieTales give us? Check it out. It's crazy old Maurice from Beauty and the Beast if he was Jimmy Gord in a lab coat. And just to make things more awkward, he sings about being afraid. It sucks. Wait, Fanatic, it's important to know that Dr. Flurry is voiced by writer Mark Steele. Okay, but didn't he co-write this movie with Mike Naraki? And that reminds me, Mike Naraki co-wrote Larry Boy and the Bad Apple, which was a much better movie than this one. Well, maybe this movie might not be as bad? Don't try to deny it, you hate this movie too. I read your blog. So, uh, you're not helping. Meanwhile, there's a hero montage. Well, not of Larry Boy, but of Junior. Nope, not interested. Oh, wait. Bob is the one investigating, while Larry Boy eats a plate of nachos. Okay, movie. Can you make Larry Boy even more useless? I mean, I should apologize to Larry Boy and the Bad Apple for saying that their gym scenes were cringeworthy. I'd settle for that rather than watch Larry Boy get beat up by penguins, get frozen eyeballs, and have Scooter try to shake him awake from this movie. Seriously, we're in the second half of the movie, and so far, Larry Boy is useless, Alfred will recruit new members at a throw of a snowball, and basically anybody can show up in a movie and cosplay as superheroes. So our heroes make it to Bumbleburg. Um, I said they make it to Bumbleburg? Wait... That can't be it, right? Bumbleburg has more buildings than that. And it's much bigger. Did I get the right movie? Come on, that can't be Bumbleburg. In Larry Boy and the Bad Apple, the city backdrops and grand visuals work to the movie's advantage. Because it made you think that Larry Boy could get around with his plunger ears while in mid-air. That's how badass he was. But not even the glorious Bumbleberg from Larry Boy and the Bad Apple can save this movie because it packed up and left after reading this movie's script. So Dr. Flurry stops by Discount Bumbleberg to let us know that he's evil. Bravo! Don't expect this fight scene to be any better than the other ones. It overstays its welcome, and just like the robbery scene, totally not rehearsed. Now, just to preamp everyone's disappointment, Dr. Flurry uses his weapon on our heroes. We learn that Bob is afraid of monkeys, Vogue doesn't like bad hair days, and Larry Boy has a thing with balloons? Nah, Larry Boy is way too smart for that. Wow. That was both random and stupid. And then to test our patience, Junior decides to try out his new superhero costume during this fight scene. So what's our heroes gonna do? Oh wait, Larry Boy isn't too far. Okay, Larry Boy can use his plunger ears to get Junior out of harm's way. Alright, okay, okay, video over, we're done, we're done, no, I'm sorry, no, no. Okay, how much you want to bet that Mike Naraki didn't agree to this part of the movie when writing the script? I mean, I'm pretty sure that this was Mark Steele's doing. No, I'm sorry, I don't care what happens next. Y'all killed this movie when y'all kidnapped Larry Boy. You can't come back from that. This movie is officially dead. But leave it to Alfred to make things right. 
Yeah, let's sing a song about how you can trust in God whenever you're afraid. Oh, yay, let's sing along. Forced in song has nothing to do with saving Junior. Yup, stupid song. I just want to wrap this up already. So the other heroes get kidnapped too. Hmm, that's weird. It's almost as if we don't need these heroes at all. Oh, look at this cucumber hero. Let's scrap him. Oh, look. Look at these Avengers rejects. Yep, scrap them too. Then Junior takes over while Alfred sneaks into the penguin robot to free the other heroes. Can this movie be over already? Oh, yay. Junior damages his suit again. Well, not like he's learned his lesson from earlier. You know what? Next time, leave this movie to Larry Boy. He won't get his suit wet by being reckless, thanks. But Junior has plenty of snowballs to take down this robot. Weird. Almost as if having a superhero costume was not needed at all. Just be a normal person! I swear, if nothing good happens in the rest of this movie, then I'm just gonna turn this thing off. Oh my god, he does something worth mentioning. So yeah, that was real. Larry Boy saved Dr. Flurry from destruction. Dr. Flurry is like, you want to hang out sometime? And Larry Boy is like, um, you're going to jail right now. And the cops take away Dr. Flurry. Oh yes, Larry Boy did that. But anyway, back to the stupidity. Junior gets credited for saving the day, and the movie ends with an unnecessary close-up of Junior. Whatever. And then our heroes write off never to be seen again. Well, Larry Boy is still around, but in Veggie Tales in the House. But that's a story for another day. And that's the story of how starting a League of Heroes was a bad idea, only to make that same mistake again in Veggie Tales in the House, so that Junior can be the star again by being yet another kid superhero that no one asked for. I've never felt so hollow inside. So what can we learn from this movie? Nothing. I mean, I knew this was just a cash-in on Marvel's The Avengers, but this was just weird and insulting. This movie was so anti-Larry Boy, because it didn't offer him anything good, and it doesn't surprise me to see what's in store for him on Veggie Tales in the House. The only saving grace was when Larry Boy saved the bad guy from his demise and sent him off with a kick-ass line. But aside from that, the rest of the movie followed a character that wasn't interesting to begin with. This gave very little time to get to know the other heroes because they're in this movie too. They're on the box cover. So the side characters were a bore, the villain was a joke, and Bumbleberg was abnormally small compared to Larry Boy and the Bad Apple. Now, the choices made for this movie was upsetting, but of all the bad Larry Boy movies, this was the least bad. It almost worked as a standalone Larry Boy episode and almost worked as an Avengers parody. The animation was decent and so was the runtime. It was also nice to have Newsboy sing the theme song, but overall, this movie is frozen in its time and in its ability to please Larry Boy fans. Now I apologize if I was being harsh on this movie. But please understand that Larry Boy shouldn't be underappreciated. Things were good in Larry Boy and the Bad Apple, I promise you. It's finally done! I finally reviewed this movie! Yeah, those were my thoughts on the incredibly useless League of Vegetables. So if you like this video, be sure to give it a like and please subscribe to the channel. And as always, thanks for watching this video. It took a really, really, really long time to make. A lot of rewrites, guys. I mean, that's a lot of time that I can never get back. Just saying. And on that note, this has been the Larry Boy Fanatic. The eyes and plunger ears of the Larry Boy universe. See you guys! Right after I go to therapy for watching this movie. Seriously. I mean, Larry Boy and the Bad Apple. 
That was awesome. 